Hello, welcome to Fantastic Books and Where to Find Them. Today we are going to talk about a new release, which is the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them 2017 edition. Um, it's had some new bits added, it's got this new cover, uh, well, different covers depending where you are. This is the, the UK British cover, I imagine. This is for the textbook that inspired the Fantastic Beasts film, N not a book of the film. That only came in the screenplay. Some people got a little confused about that when the new one came out, so I just wanted to put that out there. We also had a new audiobook um, to accompany the new edition. I want to talk about that as well. So first off, what is Fantastic Beasts and where to find them when we're not talking about the film? It was a book released in 2001 for comic relief. It was this and... Well, not this one, this is my favourite cover, so I have it. Um, the Fantastic Beasts book and the Quidditch of the Ages book. And they were released to help make money for Comic Relief. And they did really, really well. Uh, even the new ones, of they've brought out new editions of the Quidditch of the Ages. Well, new covers anyway. For Quidditch of the Ages and Beedle of the Bard. And I'm not sure about Beedle of the Bard, but I know Quidditch of the Ages and the Fantastic Beasts ones are still uh, raising money for Comic Relief. And Lumos now as well, which is J.K. Rowling's charity. They are written by J.K. Rowling. The original copies were written by Newt Scamander, obviously J.K. Rowling, but um, done by that. Whereas the new one is actually, says it's penned by J.K. Rowling, which I only noticed, well, it says Newt Scamander there, but it's basically by J.K. Rowling. Um, maybe because she's a bit more popular now and people know who she's, not that she wasn't popular then, but um, it's a lot more of a bigger thing now perhaps, and the covers don't really seem to match the style that I think I associate with Harry Potter, so maybe that was a bit of an extra help, because it doesn't say Harry Potter anywhere. Maybe that's uh, something to look into. Anyway, um, so Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, textbook. Then in 2013, they discussed the film. Obviously last year, November, we had the film in 2016. Um, and now, March 14th, 2017, the new edition. Um, I think it's probably is in part because of the success of the films. Well, probably not even in part, probably completely, let's be honest. Um, it contains six new beasts, a new foreword, and like I said, we've now got an accompanying audiobook, which is read by Eddie Redmayne, and I'll get to that soon, don't worry. So I thought I'd go through and show you the new beasts. I've tried to bookmark them with a really terrible bookmark, so it's not very good. So we have the hide behind, which kind of looks... A bit like a Sasquatch sort of fellow. And they are crossed between a demiguise and a ghoul. Um, which doesn't sound fun. It's preferred prey as humans and it is a... Oh, it's only a 4X classification. So some skilled wizards could potentially handle. But, um, I think all the newer beasts tend to be very American based. Because we've had the whole Ivermorny stories and a lot of the American writings coming out from Pottermore. That I assume that's why we're now getting them, and obviously the film. And then we've got the Hodag, which is uh, a 3x, so competent wizards can handle that. Um, it's got magic horns and can make a man immune to the effects of alcohol and able to go to sleep, go without sleep, so for seven days and seven nights, when uh, if they uh, their horns are powdered. There's no picture, I'm afraid, for that one, but that's the page there. For that, and we have the horned serpent. So another, obviously they are American beasts, but the horned serpent and a couple of these specifically are uh, houses from Ivermorny. Whereas obviously we have Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. They have Puckwudgie, Wampus, Horned Serpent, and Thunderbird. I've probably forgotten one. Uh, a horned serpent is a five X, so really dangerous. No wizard killer, impossible to domesticate. And there's not really much about the actual beast itself, and apart from the fact they were hunted to extinction. Um, there's one that has a jewel in its forehead, and that they are linked to, obviously, to Ivan Morney. Um, one of them offered shavings for its horn as the core of the first ever American made one. So that's probably pretty cool. I like that. I like the new illustrations as well. Um, there's not loads of illustrations, and some of them are repeated. Like. I would have really liked different, like you've got the foreword there, which I'll get to because it's awesome. And then it's the same illustration. I'd have loved different illustrations for that. And then you've got, uh, I think, a little Niffler there who is then again featured at the back, I believe, as well. 
I'd have liked some a bit more variety with the illustrations, but it is an illustrated guide coming out, I think, the end of this year. So they probably got all the good stuff saved for that. And fair enough, to be honest. Um, that's kind of what the illustrated guides are for, so it makes sense. We have the Snally Gaster, which is a 4X. Which is like that. It's part bird, part reptile, and is meant to potentially be related to Okami, which we see in the films. Um and they have teeth of serrated steel and their hides are bulletproof so they're a bit of a problem for keeping a secret for muggles because they're not scared of muggles because they, they can't shoot them and they can kill them pretty easy so yeah that's a, a, a lot of fun for the ministry of magic to deal with and then we have thunderbird i'm sure there's no picture for these i've just got some little pixies on there as well but thunderbird is a 4x um obviously there's, there's meant to be quite a lot of them in arizona which is where frank hopefully is living now oh this is quite interesting as well the fact that they're so sensitive to supernatural danger that if you've got a feather in your wand they've been known to preemptively fire curses um i'm assuming defensively <laughs> you'd like to think uh, and obviously yeah one of their houses from i've morning is named after thunderbird and then i believe last oh we do have a thunderbird illustration it was just a, a full spread for it. Get off, Frank. And then last, but certainly not least, once I can get to it, is the Wampus Cat, who is a 5X. I was like, oh, kitty. But yeah, known was a killer, impossible to domesticate. I mean, it's a cat, let's be honest. But um, they're huge. They're meant to be like um, lion and cougar size. And can walk on its hind legs, outrun arrows, and their eyes are meant to have the power of hypnosis and legitimacy. Hypnosis and mind reading. So, yeah, I can kind of see why they'd be a bit dangerous. There was a guy, Abel Treetops, who was meant to have a training method for them and actually was found to have committed fraud by just putting engorgement charms on measles. So... The only interesting bit we have about that, like that, but it's a cutie. It's quite nice. And again, it's one of the Ivan Morney houses. I'd like to be a Wampus, but I think I'm a Puck YG if I remember rightly. So, yay. But, no, eh, it's not too bad. I'm surprised there's no Puck YG in there, which is sad. Um, but then is it a class as a being? Who knows? Um, so, yeah, that was the new beasts. We've got a new forward, and the new forward, it fits in perfect with the new films, which I'm guessing, like I said, is probably why they've done it. Uh, it mentions New York, Madame Pickery, um, and it really cleverly, it doesn't say anything else about what would happen in future films or anything else, um, but in a believable way. And it, the way it's written is very much in the style of the books. Like, he mentions Rita Skeeter um, writing a really terrible uh, autobiography, I think, for him, and how he had a... Um, saucy relationship with Madame Pickery. Obviously not literally, this is what Rita Skeeter has written, but I can totally imagine her writing something like that. So that was that sounded really good. Um, and even better is the audiobook. That, especially the foreword when written, the foreword when read by Eddie Redmayne is brilliant. Um, he really, obviously he is Newt, so he captures Newt again perfectly. But it's also, there's loads of sound effects as well i mean there's little things where there's extra notes it sounds like he's got like a little dictaphone or i assume like a magic dictaphone that's interesting um and he's like taking notes that way and you can hear that in the in the audiobook and then there's actual like animal sound effects which are cool and terrifying uh the acromantula i had my headphones in it was dark and very loud and scared the but Jesus out of me. I am not a massive spider fan and Aragog terrifies me. So um hearing like these big stumpy but hairy it's weird saying you can hear it and it's hairy, but it'll make sense if you listen to it. Um just hearing it stumping around Oh it was horrible. But then that was nice that it kind of created that sort of feeling just from sounds, which is nice. Um and yeah, that that kind of makes it. This all that put together is fantastic. I highly recommend it. It's only like an hour and forty minutes long, I think. You can get it on Audible, so if you've got an Audible account, you can get that first book for free in a trial. So you don't have to pay for it. Um, or if you've got it, it's well worth a credit. I wasn't sure about paying or using a whole credit month credit for for that, but it was worth it. It was really really good. 
highly recommend it um last one to talk about about the new edition is the cover why bloomsbury why i mean i kind of these kind of bits are cool and i like if it wasn't for the, the cartoony silly dragon on the front that's not too bad on the back it's a bit weird but no i, I just it looks too childish and i know harry potter is technically meant for kids um and i probably wouldn't have been that bothered as a child myself i think but i don't really i don't really like it i love the ebook and the audiobook covers they're gorgeous it looks very much like the original cover that was created for the books which we see in the films um to design by mina lima and are beautiful uh, i'm not sure if they got mina lima to do the audiobook and ebook cover but they're very similar to the original one for that um and even the american covers aren't that bad they look like nice plain school textbooks which obviously the original copy was um originally meant to be harry's copy of the textbook so that was kind of perfect um so they're nice but yeah anything's kind of better than this unfortunately and it's not even it hasn't got anything on the inside on the so naked it's quite a boring book as well it would have been nice to have had something like sneaky under there could have redeemed it i could have just kept the dust jacket off and redeemed it that way but no but no the, the, the new stuff is good is it worth 12.99 I'm not sure. I think I'd rather, instead of paying twelve ninety nine for the book, I'd probably just get the audiobook and enjoy it that way, or the ebook, or both. Probably, probably those. Um, I actually used a Watson's voucher and my card and paid like a pound and seven p for this, so I don't, I don't mind that too much. But I think either that, or I'd probably try and import one of the American versions because <laughs> the new stuff is interesting and I like looking at the illustrations. And obviously, it'll be great to use in my Instagram account for pictures and things, but. As a book itself, I probably would have just got the ebook. Which I, probably, I assume it would have been cheaper. You never know nowadays, to be honest. Okay, so I'm rambling. I'm going to sign off now. But before I go, to let you know that the Fairy Leap one year anniversary box is coming up. Um, that will be shipped out end of next week. So you'll probably get a video for that for a couple of weeks. Um, but I have been doing a lot of unboxing and event videos. So I'm going to try and do a few more book reviews. Um, I might try and do a February and March haul put together and maybe do some reviews on the books that I've already read these past couple of months. But obviously they'll be spoiler free. Um just a little quick reviews for you guys. Um Mass Effect is coming out next Saturday officially. The trial's out now. But I'm still here, I'm still recording, so don't worry. There will be videos. I can't promise there won't be a Mass Effect related video, but I'm sure I can put a bookish spin on it, it'll be fine. Um so yeah, take care guys. Thank you for watching. If you like, give me a thumbs up um and a subscribe would be fantastic i've like seen a big rise in subscribers and views and things lately so i really appreciate it i can't believe i'm still still doing this it's fantastic so thank you all and i hope you enjoyed this video bye